worked on expanding. Okay, and what were what were we doing with expanding? Well, what's expanding? Distributing, multiplying, right? You're multiplying terms to make it bigger, right? And then what we had, we had a bracket that had two terms in it, right? And another bracket that had two terms in it. It could be plus in between or minus in between, but had two terms, right? And then we were expanding, we were multiplying, right? Mm -hmm. Four. Today we're going to do exactly the opposite of that. So today we're going to learn how can I go from something that looks like, for example, this, to something that looks like this. Alright, so we're, we're working backward today of what we learned yesterday, okay? So we have to always find our way back home. And this is our way back home, okay? Now, when we're factoring, the process is called factoring, okay? The opposite of expanding is factoring. So the op uh, that's the first answer here. Now, there is multiple ways to factor. There is multiple steps. There is things that we have to pick, either this form or this form, okay? So not every single kind of factoring works for all kind of polynomials, okay? So we have to be able to choose which factoring process is the correct one, right? It's like you're standing right in the middle of three different ways and you have to pick your right way back home, right? It's one of the three, or could be multiple processes. Sometimes you have to take two different routes, two different, you know, make two different decisions to get home. Okay, same thing here. So there's three different processes that we're gonna learn. There's actually more than three in reality, but three that we're gonna learn here in this class. Okay? The first one of them is the greatest common factor. It's factoring out the greatest common factor, which we just did. So picking what is the number that, or the, la the letter that I can um, take out, divide each term by, okay? So a greatest common factor is an expression that can be divided into each term in a polynomial. So in this case, we're not only looking at the number, we're looking at a term. The term can have a number, and a letter, okay? So you always have to look at all your terms, and then you're gonna have to decide, is there a number that I can divide each term by? Mm -hmm. And do I have a common letter? Okay, so let's see this example. So I'm looking at this, this is called a polynomial because it has more than two terms, okay? We usually, if it's three terms, we call them trinomial because there's three terms, and anything on top of Try we call them poly, but you you also can see polynomial for three terms. Okay, monomial means one term, binomial means two, trinomial means three, but also polynomial you can call three is polynomial multiple. So I have the polynomial here, and it's nine x cubed minus fifteen x squared plus three x. What would you say, if you're looking at this, your greatest common factor is? So you're gonna have to find a number that you can divide, divide all three numbers by. So nine, 15, and three. What would be the number that you can divide all three by? Three. Now, if I'm looking at all the three terms, can you see that all three terms have the letter X in it? Yes. So that means X is the common letter. Right? So I can factor that out as well. Okay? So my greatest common factor in this case is 3x. Okay? It's not only 3, it's 3x. Are we okay with that? So, you look at your numbers first and find your greatest common factor, and you look at your terms and see if the letter is in all of them. And you always pick, with respect to the letter, you always pick the one with the lowest exponent. 
Okay? So if you look at, uh, for example, if I have x2 plus x5 plus x7, uh, right? Your greatest common factor is going to be x squared because that's the one with the lowest exponent. Okay? So you always have to pick the letter with and the lowest exponent. Okay? We'll talk more about this with examples. All right. So, first of all, I have to state what my greatest common factor is. So we decided that the greatest common factor is 2x. Yes? Are, do we all agree on that? Okay. So, when you pick your greatest common factor, you're going to write your greatest common factor outside. So my greatest common factor is 3x. And you're going to have to divide each term in the polynomial by that factor. So which means, I'm going to open brackets, and then I'm going to divide each term by 3x. write the greatest common factor outside, we divide each term by the greatest common factor. I should have written this one here. Okay. Now, let's see what we get. So it's going to be 3x. Always you have to have your GCF outside, guys. You don't get rid of your GCF, it stays outside. So, we have the 3x, and then what's 9x cubed divided by 3x? Uh -huh. 3x squared, do you guys agree? Okay, let's see why. 9 divided by 3 is? 3. And then x cubed over x. Eyes on me for a second x cube is, don't write this, x cube is x times x times x, yes? That's what x cube is. Divided by an x. So what happened here, this and this, they cancel each other, so you're only left with x squared. Okay? Make sense? So I'll have 3x squared. Now, 15x squared divided by 3x. What's 15 divided by 3? 5. What's x squared divided by x? x. And then plus, what's 3x divided by 3x? What is it? 1. Anything you divide by itself is 1. You don't get rid of it. You have to write plus 1. So you see that my final answer should have the greatest common factor and then bracket and your leftovers. Okay? How can you check if your answer is correct? If, you, if you're not 100% sure and you really want to check and you want to like check it on the side on another paper, how would you check that? Multiply, Multiply right? Expand it. Because the, we just said that the opposite of expanding is factoring. So I just factored. If I want to check if my answer is correct, I can go on another piece of paper. Mm -hmm. On another piece of paper, I can distribute this in. I can say, okay, what's 3x times 3x squared? What's 3x times 5x? What's 3x times what? And I should get this answer that I started with. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So, the greatest common factor is always, you can always ask yourself, do I have a greatest common factor? Okay? No matter what kind of other factoring you have, you can always ask yourself, you should always ask yourself that as your first step. Okay? Your first step is always, do I have a greatest common factor? If you do, you factor it out. If you don't, you skip that step and go to the next, which we're going to learn about later. Okay? 
Let's look at example one. So I have 8x to the power of 4 minus 4x cubed plus 20x squared. What would be your greatest common factor? Think and put your hand up, please. Rita? 4. Do you guys agree that the 4 is a number? That's common between 8, 4, and 20. I can divide all of them by 4. Okay, how about the letter? X squared. And why did you pick X squared? That's right. All of them have X's, and this is the smallest exponent. So it's going to be 4X squared. Good. So I write the 4x squared, and then I'm going to divide each term by 4x <coughs> squared. students do is that they forget to leave the GCF outside. <coughs> so, GCF outside, and then what's 8x to the power of 4 divided by 4x squared? What is it? So, what's 8 divided by 4? 2x squared. Right, because x4 over x squared. So you have x, 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 x divided by. So it's basically what you're doing is you're subtracting your x4. Okay, we'll learn about this later. We have a whole unit on how to simplify x4. Okay. How about negative 4x cubed over 4x squared? So negative x, yeah. So remember that you have to have a sign, either a negative sign or a positive sign, right? Mm -hmm. How about the next one? Just 5, right? Because 20 divided by 4, that's 5. x squared over x squared, they cancel each other. They're the same thing. They cancel each other, right? So you'll be left with plus 5. So 4 divided by 4, that's just a 1, right? So I don't have to write the 1. I can. I don't have to. And then x cubed over x squared. So you have x, x, x over x and x, right? So the x and the x cancel each other. This cancels, so you're going to be left with x, right? Are we okay with that? Are we okay with this? All right, let's look at the next one. 25x squared minus 100. Is that what you're 
you're asking about different customers. Sorry, keep going. About the exponents. Yep. Yeah, can that be factored out from here because both of them can be have square root? We're not doing that yet. That will be our next lesson, okay? But but yes. But as of now, we are not gonna do that. And that's why I said no. Because I knew you were gonna ask. All right. Not yet. Yeah, I know. I know. This is gonna be one of the questions that you're gonna have to think a little bit harder and try different numbers that you can factor out, right? So you have negative 54x to the power of 4 plus 135x. So on your calculator, you're gonna try, what can I divide 54 and 135 by? So can you guys give me some answers here? It doesn't have to be your the greatest. Let's see, what, what can I divide 54 by? Wouldn't the answer be a decimal? You have to make sure that when you divide the 54 by that number, it's going to give you a whole number. Otherwise, it's not a factor. Okay? So if you divide 54 by 3, and it gave you, I don't know, what's 54 divided by 3? 18. 18. So that's a whole number. So 3 is a factor. How about 54 divided by 4? 13. So, so because that gives you a decimal, so when I divide 54 by 4, it gives me a decimal, then 4 is not a factor. So I can't okay. Can you just give me? I don't want to give it out yet. Okay. So, what can you divide 54 by? Two, three. Okay. What else? Okay. What's 54 divided by what? Can you divide it by six? No. Yeah. Can you divide it by six? No. What do you get when you divide by six? Nine. Okay, so I have 6, I have 9, I have, what else did we say? Uh, 18. Okay, can you divide by 7? Okay, can you divide it by 20, what is it, 27? And 1 and 54, okay? So you see, this is a lot of numbers, right? Now I have to pick that 135 is even bigger. Okay, what can you divide 135 by? Nine. Okay, what else? So I can divide it by five. I can, if I divide it by five, what do I get? Twenty-seven. Okay. Nine, you said. If I divide it by nine, what do I get? What's 135 divided by 9? 15. Can I divide it by 7? Can I divide it by 8? Is that it? Okay. Can you see your greatest common factor? 9 or 27, which one? 27. 27, right? 27 is your greatest common factor. Now, let's say if you didn't pick 27 and you picked something else. Let's say you picked 9, right? As your greatest common factor. What happened is when you pick 9 is, if I, if I pick 9, okay, I'm going to erase this, don't write this. Then if I divide this by 9 and I divide this by 9, what do I have left? What's 54 divided by 9? 6. Six. And then what's 135 divided by 9? 15. 15. Yeah. 135 divided by 9? 15. 15. Okay. Sorry, I'm thinking of something else. All right. Now, if I look at these two numbers, right, I can see that these two numbers, I can still factor something out of them. What can I divide both 6 and 15 by? 3. So my factor, I did not factor my greatest common number because I can still factor a 3 out. And when I factor a 3 out, 3 times 9 gives me what? 
27, which we got 27, remember? Yeah. All right. So sometimes you have to do multiple steps if you don't get it right away from the beginning. Now, another thing that I want to talk about, eyes on me because that's very important. If your first term is negative, you must factor that negative out. Okay? So my, my factor is not going to get only be 27. It's going to be negative 27. Okay? If your first term is negative, you must factor a negative out. So that's going to be negative 27. How about the letter? Do I have a common letter? X. X. So let's see what happens. Negative 54 X4 over negative 27 X plus 135 X over negative 27 X. Are we okay with this? What do you have left when you divide the negative 54x4 over negative 27x? Positive. Positive. 2x cubed. That's right. So why is it positive? Negative and negative makes a positive when you're dividing or multiplying, right? In this case, I'm dividing. So that's going to be positive, and that's going to be 2x cubed, right? x4 over x is x cubed. You lost one of the x's. Mm -hmm. Then, positive 135x divided by negative 27x. Negative, negative and 5. Can't be 5. 3, is it? What do you get when you do 135 divided by 27? Five. Oh yeah, because you're factoring the three out. Never mind. Um, and then just five, right? Because the x and the x are gonna cancel. Okay. Always look back at your numbers and make sure that your numbers don't have a common factor. Okay. You see that the two and the five. There's nothing I can factor out of them. Mm -hmm. Right. So that means my factor, my factoring is. It comes with practice. It comes with knowing your multiplication table. It comes with knowing how to use your calculator as well. Okay? So how about this? I'll give you some time to practice a couple questions. I want to still do difference of squares today. Uh, and then when we finish the difference of squares, that's it. I won't teach you some product today because that's another thing that I want to focus on. And I don't want to wish it. I want you to get the graph out of it. So tomorrow we'll do the sum and product. Okay? So this way you have the weekend, the long weekend to practice. It's a long weekend? Yes. There's no school. There's no school.